Welcome to the class today. I've just uh, started the recording, so the recording of this lecture is on. Uh, welcome to the class. And um, yeah, let's just pray together and we will get started. Could somebody please uh, uh, pray and we will start. All right, wants to pray. Yeah. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful day, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you have been so wonderful to us, Lord Jesus. As we learn today, Lord God, from our pastor, Lord Jesus, I pray that your spirit to anoint him. And then as he speaks every word, uh, let that word um, bring your revelation to us, Lord Jesus, so that we can understand how, uh, as a church, and uh, can we re um, earn as a organized organization lord jesus we thank you lord, lord jesus that you are all knowing god and you can give your knowledge to us lord jesus. thank you father for this day and for, for the classes that you're gonna have in the mighty name of jesus i pray amen 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 up oh, good morning uh welcome everyone once again to the class i am just going to quickly um review um, some of the things we did uh, uh, in our last class and then go on to our next uh, chapter. We, last week, we um, talked about church ministry and organization structure. So I just want to share that um, same document uh, just to quickly review and uh, then we will go forward on uh, what we have for today. You now, uh, uh, the PDFs have all been um, released in the uh, classwork section of uh, the Google Classroom. So you could uh, uh, you know, just download that and follow that. Okay, so I'm just quickly reviewing what we did last week. So we talked about uh, organization structure, we went through, you know, some of the main major types of organization structures, the functional, divi the divisional, the flat, the matrix. Uh, we talked about, you know, uh, a biblical, you know, we see this even in the Bible. We just gave one example of how David organized everything around the tabernacle, you know, that went on for over 30 years. 30 years, they had a very 24-7 worship happening in David's tabernacle. And so there was very organized and there was structure, there's design, you can look at it in depth. Uh, we talked about why we must have a well-designed organization. You know, it's gonna really help people work efficiently, be productive, um, and uh, people are gonna enjoy working in an organization that's designed well, right? So we, uh, we went through some, uh, uh, you know, how, 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 you know, things that will guide us in uh, in designing the structure for our organization we talked about some tests that we could have uh, to see if you know we're doing this right we are designing the organization structure right so we went through some of those tests now uh, we talked about you know cutting off uh, unnecessary uh, wastage when you're designing the details um, and we talk more about processes and you know uh, so when uh, uh, if there are uh, intermediary steps that are really not adding value, uh, we gave a simple example of person A sending an email to B and B just forwards it to C and C just forwards it to D, then B and C are not adding any value. You know, they're just clicking the forward button. <laughs> uh, so we could just go from A to D directly and, uh, you know, just save time and uh, make things more efficient. Just one example, right? Um, we looked at uh, you know, the organization of uh, APC, I just gave you a little idea of how we evolved over the years. And uh, so this is our current um, structure where we are arrived at. And of course, you know, as we you know, grow, uh, we will kind of expand uh, the structure. Uh, I've been thinking now about uh, a global structure, you know, so when we want to set up things globally, uh, all that we've been doing right now is locally, meaning within India. But when we want to do things globally, establish uh, things outside India, what would a global structure look like? So that's kind of 
thinking that's going on right now, but uh, this is what we have uh, for, for which is, you know, for what we're doing right now. This is how we are structured. And as we go into the details of each department, that will have further structure. And remember, you know, like we said, uh, the structure that you come up with should serve the mission of your organization. And uh, the reason publications are so important for us and we have all of these things is because um, that's a major part of what we're doing, very important part. And so uh, we need to you know, grow in all these areas and media also is very important for us. And so we have a structure like that and uh, information technology is uh, structured this way. You know, so th this has evolved over time and it will continue to evolve. You know, we will fine tune it or expand it or, you know, and do things as needed and we could restructure as needed. And lastly, uh, I, I shared a little bit about, you know, uh, uh, for most churches, Christian ministries, uh, volunteers are an important part of uh, the organization, uh, which uh, may not be true in the case of a business entity, but in our set up at a church or a Christian ministry, we do have a lot of volunteers coming in helping. And so how do we, you know, and volunteers can play, uh, take part in multiple areas, you know, and so how do we, what kind of a model will work well? And so we went through the hub and spoke model uh, and showed that you know, this, is, this is a really good model for engaging volunteers while you're also having specialized uh, teams. Like you have your pastors, you have your IT team, you have your ministry areas, how, you know, you can engage people in different areas. So we went through all of that. Um, before we, so today I want to step into talking about administrative policies, guidelines, and standards. Uh, just bring in some thoughts on that. Uh, uh, before we go into that, any questions from last week? Uh, any questions on, um, you know, uh, organizational structure, organizational design? Uh, any, you know, any thoughts any one of you have had? Uh, if you want to ask, you can do it before we jump forward. Okay, um, uh, so let's move forward in, uh, in uh, what we uh, want to talk about. Uh, another important, very important part of um, um, in the uh, Christian ministry uh, is having administrative policies, guidelines, and standards. You know, um, uh, and I just share some practical things. You know, once I remember when we were uh, somewhere up in the north uh, ministering, and then one pastor came to me. He said, uh, Pastor, you know, and, and usually during break times and all when you're having conferences, we, we, we have the opportunity to interact uh, uh, informally with uh, other leaders and pastors. And so one pastor came, he said, Pastor, I, uh, I have a question. Uh, and he said, you know, he said, I'm facing a real problem uh, in my church right now. Um, uh, I said, okay, or what's happening? He said, you know, I, I hired a lady uh, who's a member of the congregation to be, to work as a, in the admin, administrative, uh, as an administrative assistant to help in with the administration. Uh, but this lady, uh, someday she will come, someday she will not show up for work. Uh, sometimes she'll come at 10 o'clock, sometimes she'll come at 11 o'clock. And so, you know, things are so loose here. Uh, how should I handle it? You know, so then I just asked him some questions. I said, uh, you know, uh, did you give her a offer letter that stated, you know, uh, and, and do you have a staff guideline like that states, you know, this is her role and this is what is expected. You know, she's got to be, you know, what are her work hours, uh, where she, you know, all of those things. Did you, do, did you do that? No, 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 nothing, nothing. I just, you know, I just told her to join and help me. I mean, work as uh, in the administration. So uh, sadly, many churches and Christian ministries operate in this manner. Meaning it's a very ad hoc manner, you know, some, uh, the pastor or the leader would just, oh yeah, you come and work for me, uh, you know, and this, they just take people on. Uh, there is nothing written, there is no, nothing documented. Um, 
they don't have any policies uh, or guidelines or standards for various roles and functions and, you know and especially talking about churches uh, you know uh, and everything seems so ill-defined and so then people both the leader uh, as well as the person who's been engaged to work in the organization it, things are not very clear you know so that's when you have such kind of things happening when you know people take their own liberty on when to come to work and which day and whatever you know so uh, uh this is where I and mean, this is a very small example to show us you know this we need to have certain policies in the organization certain guidelines certain standards and we will go through some uh, thing practical scenarios here yeah so when we talk about policies operational guidelines practice standards what are we referring to right we are referring to well documented rules right that means these are actually written down they're not in somebody's head but these have been written down somewhere right um, that will guide the procedures and the practices of what happens within the organization so it's written down it's almost like a rule book but we don't call it a rule book but you know we call it a organizational policy document or a guideline or you know things like that and uh, it but it's very important because it tells people you know this is what you should do this is how we should do it right and uh, what is the advantage of having something like that you know, generally it's going to establish and we will repeat this you know it's going to establish certain things there's going to be efficiency there's going to be consistency uh, people will have responsibility because it's all been written down and there will also be accountability that means we can hold people accountable for what happens so why is it important to have these what we're referring to as policies guidelines and standards documented right it will additional things it will provide guidance to people so if people have to make various decisions uh, it'll provide guidance for example you know uh, as a church uh, as we started uh, you know growing uh, we have we started getting requests from other ministries so you know can you please make this announcement in your during your announcement time and we still keep getting those things so in the early days we thought okay you know let's be nice uh, we'll give them we'll make an announcement of that conference happening in the city or something else that's happening you know um, and sometimes people say we want to come and make an announcement during your announcement time uh, in the early days okay you know we didn't you know some of these things you learn by experience you make mistakes and you learn so this is i'm just giving one example where we had requests from other ministries who would be having various things going on they want to make announcement in our church on sunday morning during the service time during the announcements time so initially we accommodated those requests and then uh, i remember one time you know this was um, uh, a well-known christian ministry they wanted to make a presentation so i said okay i'll give you you know five minutes or whatever that was and this person went on for 15 minutes you know i'm making announcement uh, now i found it a little awkward to stand up there and say please don't you know if it was some other setting i would have done it and i have done it but i would i interrupted the announcement i said sir i gave you five minutes you're going on 15 minutes but here on Sunday, I couldn't do that because, you know, it, 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 this is a well-respected ministry, a well-respected person standing and talking. And uh, we are in front of all the congregation. I didn't want to cause any ill feeling, anything like that. So I just had to sit there quiet and tolerate it. But in my mind, I was feeling so wronged because out of trust, we had given five minutes. This person is speaking for 15 minutes, you know, which is very unfair because people didn't come to church on sunday to listen to some announcements they came to worship god to pray and you know to uh, receive the word of god so that's when i said okay enough is enough you know there's no need to be nice in this matter we're going to put a policy in place and this is going to be a policy so i typed it out looked at all the various nuances of that you know and i shared it with the person our admin person in those days at that time saying this is our policy 
for requests that come from other organizations requesting to make announcements at APC? The answer is N-O, no. Doesn't matter which organization, which church, which ministry, we will not give time during our service for any announcement other than from APC. So our announcements are going to be very short. And we're going to take only five minutes to do our announcements. If there's any special announcement, okay, we may give two or three minutes extra, but it will be only APC announcements. That's all. Any other organization, anybody wants, they can come, they can set up things on their own outside and they can do their own, you know, they can have a book table or they can do a display, they can put a banner, but they can come do it outside. That's going to be our policy from now on, you know? So we learned through things, but we documented it, we gave it. So from then on, when requests started coming in, this was a standard answer, you know, to any, any request for making announcement. The answer is no, uh, because we say, yes to one we have to say yes to everybody else so we are saying no to all other organizations equally but we're giving you the opportunity you can come in and you know set up your own book table or set up your own desk or whatever you want your information desk so that when people go out after service when they are dismissed you know they can learn about your work your ministry and so on but no distributing handbills inside the service no making announcement inside the service so that was a policy we put in place and this happened many years ago and we've been following that strictly you know so our admin person knows this is our policy right and uh, they will handle it at that level when somebody comes and asks they will take care of it they will say this is our policy if you want to do it to you know, set up an info desk outside, you can do it. And these are our reasons, you know, we are doing this fairly. So just one example of uh, policy, you know, uh, that when you face a situation as an organization or a church, you face a situation, then you say, hey, I need to standardize, I need to define, I need to clearly state what our position is concerning this matter. I need to write it down. I need to share it with all the concerned people so that they know what to do when they are faced with uh, a situation like that. So it provides guidance, you know, for the organization, you know, I mean, for the people who need to know it, obviously, uh, not everybody needs to know everything, but for the people who are handling that matter, they need to know this is our organization policy on that matter, right? It also clarifies the organization's position on specific issues. I mean, what does, what does your organization stand for on certain matters? And uh, what will their position be? You know, again, here's another situation, you know, in the early days, and I'm just sharing all these practical things so you'll know, you know, so you'll understand like, okay, you have to make certain policy decisions. Uh, in the early days, um, I think the first, I would say, five years, six years, you know, we had a lot of uh, international people. That means people who came from abroad, who came to Bangalore, and they, uh, you know, they came as missionaries or whatever, you know, and they came with wanting to do something in Bangalore city. And uh, obviously on Sunday, they would go to a church. So we had in certain cases, some of them come to APC. And then they wanted to be involved in the church. So, you know, we say people from missionaries from America, mostly it's those missionaries from the United States. They want to come, they want to be involved in church. And so, yeah, initially, you know, again, we didn't have a policy on this matter in those days. We learned through mistakes, but uh, this was the early days. And so, yeah, okay, yeah, you know, we treat everyone equally and this is for everybody. So we let them be involved in church. But then we noticed several things. Here are some things that we noticed we observed one is suppose the, you know a ministry started and they were in charge of the ministry you know what we noticed was after two years they leave so they come to india maybe they're here on you know short-term visas or whatever uh, they come they work after two years they go back to their country and suddenly there is no leader for that area of ministry and whatever they were driving it just collapses. So that is one scenario we noticed. Another scenario was 
we also noticed that uh, some of them came and they started promoting, you know, and I'm just using this term, their brand or their version of Christianity. So they would be prom promoting, you know, their organizations. So now they're, they're part of APC. They are, we've given them permission to, you know, work, uh, I mean, serve al alongside our people, but then through that, they are actually promoting their brand of Christianity. They come from a certain church or thing, and they're trying to do that. So we noticed that as well. And sad to say, we also noticed, and this is like a big ministry from the US that came, uh, and uh, they said, you know, we are on a peace plan, a global peace plan, or whatever it was called. And it's a very well-known ministry, but I was very disappointed when I saw this. They came, they said, we want to work with your leaders and uh, can you give us their names and contact details and all of that. And uh, so we actually hosted a meeting. We invited people to come. They came, they collected all their details. The next thing we know, they're inviting leaders here to join a church that they are starting in the city, which is a branch of their big church in America. So this also we saw, you know. So I was, I was, you know, I, I was watching, you know, I was observing all this because we just started here, you know, we're in our early years and we're going through all these things. And then uh, there was another uh, thought, uh, another scenario where, uh, another large church in the US, they wanted to, you know, fund or they want to give money to a church, uh, uh, a certain ministry. And, but then it meant that, you know, they would control or they would control that area. So then what, what you know, uh, I was very clear in those days. I said, you know, we're done. We are, we are an indigenous organization. We are not depending on foreign funds and we want to remain that way. And, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, we want this to be pe people from here doing the ministry. So, so, you know, all these scenarios were happening, playing out before me. And then we came, then I said, look, you know, we need to define, we need to clearly state, how are we going to work when people overseas, you know, Western missionaries or people, ministries come, how are we going to work with them? We need something clear here because I'm seeing all these things happen and usually it ends up in problems that we need to go and put the fires out and all that. So that's when, you know, of course we discussed with pastors, we thought through on these scenarios and then we said, okay, this is going to be our policy. You know, one is, uh, and, and we wrote this down. One, uh, no leadership position will be occupied by any you know, Western missionary, all leaders, team leaders, le uh, leaders of areas of ministry, ministry leaders will be people, local people from the congregation. And that's how we will drive. If people want to come, Western missionaries come, they should serve under our leaders. Because if they leave, and which usually happens in two years or three years, they'll go back to their country. We want the ministry to continue. So therefore, the leadership will always be somebody from here. That was a policy decision we made, right? You know, because after learning, after going through all this, you know, we had to, we said, okay, these are the right decisions to make. Uh, then we also said, you know, we are going to be very careful that when they come and work with us, they will follow what we say. They cannot come in here and try to promote their brand of Christianity. You don't want that. We are very clear. We have a culture. Uh, there is a vision and a mission God has given to us. We don't want to compromise on that. Okay? And then thirdly, we're going to be very careful. We are not, you know, if somebody wants to come, uh, you know, a church from the U.S. wants to start a branch in India or whatever, you know, hey, you do it. But we are not interested in that kind of ministry. You know, we will not engage. They're, they're free to do it on their own. So again, a third policy, all concerning the same matter. So that was clarified within our leadership. So we, people knew that's where we stand. Uh, but, you know, then what we did see, I guess it's been the last uh, five, some years or so, the incoming of Western missionaries on just declined. It came, well, we don't have too many people now coming in. So that is really no longer, or at least for now, it doesn't seem to be a matter of concern. But uh, I shared all this to say with you that, 
sometimes these policies uh, happen in response to things that you see ha happening with the organization and so on, but you need to clarify where you stand, right? And okay, then everybody understands, okay, so this is how we're going to work in this situation. It then becomes a basis for decision-making that this is how, you know, everybody's gonna make decisions. Uh, it also provides uh, objectivity, consistency, understanding and fairness in this image. So people know, look, we are not making these decisions out of uh, partiality or favoring somebody. No, it's just, uh, you know, a level playing field. We are being fair to everybody. Um, we, you know, we have a policy and we're making a decision based on that policy. So it's equal to everybody, nobody's exempt, you know. So there's fairness, there's understanding. And uh, there's, uh, you know, we can hold people accountable to those things, right? Now, I wanna, having said all that, I want to just, uh, you know, emphasize certain things. One is, uh, you know, there may be a lot of discussion happening uh, to understand a scenario or a situation, but eventually everything has to be written down. You know, so it has to be written down and you, so I will share with you documents that we have, which you could use in your church or ministry. So uh, you can modify it and use it. So it has to be written down and things have to be simple and clear. You know, it shouldn't be too complicated because then if it's complicated, people will not understand it. And if they don't understand it, they won't be able to follow it. Uh, it's gotta be specific and detailed. That means, you know, uh, cover the scenarios that are being addressed, cover it, uh, you know, state what is required and uh, uh, communicate principles and motivations um, rather than the methods. You know, see, if you give principle, if you tell them, teach people the principle, then, you know, there may be some scenario that happens, some situation happens. If they understand the principle, they'll be able to apply the principle to the scenario, to the situation. So the goal is, you know, okay, this is the principle. And what is our principle? You know, so uh, example in the announcements thing, there were two principles. One is we don't want to waste, you know, uh, talking about the Sunday announcements. One is, the first principle is we don't want to waste congregation people's time listening to announcements. You know, people have come to worship. They haven't come to listen to announcements. So our announcements must be very short, five minutes, maximum seven minutes. That's a principle. Second principle is we want to be fair to everybody. So we're getting requests from so many different organizations. We can't be preferential to one organization who wants to make an announcement and say no to the other. So equal. So whatever we do, we want to be fair. So give them all the same opportunity. You can all come and set up info desk outside church to announce whatever you want to announce. So that's the principle. The situations can be varied. You know, somebody will say, we want to please, please play a, uh, two minute video announcement. Somebody will say, please give out our handbills. Somebody will say, please give us two minutes to make an announcement. Regardless the situation, the same principle applies. You know, so they, they follow the same principle. So explain the principle and the motivation. Why are we doing this? So then, you know, when people face different scenarios, different situations, they know how to apply the principle, what principle to apply and make a decision for that situation, right? Uh, make this available to people in the organization. So people should know it's there uh, when it comes to those matters. Uh, and then reiterate, review and revise. So, you know, time over time, things may change. So uh, we need, so one is we need to reiterate, means you keep repeating this. So people remember that, hey, this is our policy. This is our guideline. This is our standard. Then we have to review it. That means, okay, is it valid now or do we need to modify it in some way because of certain reasons? So then you revise the policy. So policies can be changed. Uh, that's no problem. But, you know, it has to be, there has to be good reason uh, to change those policies. Okay. So before I go further into, you know, details, we're going to talk, talk about, um, you know, different kinds of policies in the organization. We're gonna talk about administrative policies. We're gonna talk about operational guidelines and practice standards. Uh, and we will share examples of these things. Um, before we get into that, 
you know, uh, uh, are there any questions that uh, anybody has? Uh, uh, is everybody with me? Any, any, anything you want to discuss, please, uh, you're free to do that. All right, no questions, we will go forward. Everyone's, everyone's following, okay. So let's move forward. Um, where is this, okay. So, um, you know, uh, this is just a, sometimes we have some discussion in class. You know, what will happen if an organization, the no policies guidelines standards, and there will be chaos. People may not understand what to do. Or if for every decision you have to, you know, you have to sit down and have a discussion. You know, so the same kind of decision is being made in different situations and people are having meetings over and over again to arrive at the same decision. Whereas if you have a policy, you don't need the meeting, just make the decision, move on because uh, that's the policy. The, uh, regardless of the situation scenario, just follow the guideline. You know, so uh, a lot of good things happen when you have these guidelines in place. Let me mm, talk about administrative policies. That means uh, these are things as an organization in terms of from an administrative perspective. You know, so this could be, uh, for example, uh, HR policies, you know, when, uh, how, how do you take care of your, your employees, like your staff and your consultants? Um, these could be workplace policies. That means, um, you know, uh, what are, on what basis people take leave? What do they do in different situations? Can they take loans from the organization? Can, you know, different things, workplace related, you know, or, if there is conflict, how do you resolve conflict? And so many things. Um, uh, then there may be policies that guide interactions with external entities. So uh, you know how the, how does your organization, Christian organization, work with other Christian organizations or other entities? You know, would there is there some guidance on that? Um, uh, in terms of contracts and lease agreements. So for example, at APC. Uh, our policy is everything has to be documented. We will not take uh, anything, uh, uh, take a lease or uh, without a documented contract and agreement, right? Whereas I know of some, you know, some churches, they just, okay, they just go have a talk and they, you know, that talk is, is their agreement. And then afterwards, you know, it becomes a problem because they forgot what they said or what the other person said, and it can lead to a lot of misunderstanding. So for us, everything has to be documented, everything has to be signed. That's part of our policy and in, in, in what we do and you know things like that. So administrative policies, uh, how, you know, how does the organization work as far as taking care of administrative procedures, right? So uh, for us also, when we hire somebody, we give them an offer letter. We tell them to read our staff guidelines. Only if they say okay to that, do we, you know, bring them into the organization. So that's part of our policy. That's how we work. Without that, you know, we, you know, without having something documented like that, we don't, you know, we don't take on any person. Um, so uh, let me just, you know, I, I will share some things, some documents. Um, here is our staff document. I think yeah, I have um, shared this with, uh, with uh, in the course work section. Now this document keeps on changing. Meaning changing means uh, we keep adding to it. It's been growing over time. We keep refining it. Uh, maybe there are some areas we haven't covered, so we add to it and so on. So uh, this this is a document we give when somebody wants some when we we're taking somebody to work with the organization so this they read this document or they see this document even before they join us as a staff or consultant we send it to them everybody gets they get a copy please read through it so that you know how to work in the organization 
right? So this saves a lot of uh, uh, misunderstanding later on. So what is this document? I'm not going to go through everything. But I'm just uh, showing you at high level. Now, what does this document contain? We tell them this is our vision. Uh, we tell them these are our core values. Uh, uh, now this is our destiny. This is what we are journeying into. Uh, we have something on code of conduct. How do you conduct yourself as part of this organization? Now, be, this is important because uh, we are a Christian organization. Therefore, we expect certain ethical standards and moral standards and biblical standards. So in most organizations, they would have ethical standards. But for us, we also need biblical standards because we are a Christian organization, right? So um, um, we have a code of conduct. Uh, then what is our procedure for hiring or if somebody wants to resign or if we need to terminate them, how would we do it? Uh, what kinds of staff people work with us? We have staff and consultant, the work hours, you know, when do people have to work? How do we pay their salary and uh, reimburse them for any work related expenses? Uh, what are the leaves people can take uh, when they're working? What are some of the benefits they can have? Uh, then there are some other things that we felt are needed. Now, this would, you know, we, we included this, you know, when you interact with church members. So again, here, you know, uh, we had problems. I mean, problems in the early days, you know, um, uh, if a person who's working for the church borrows money from somebody who is a member of the congregation. Now, people in the congregation, they may say, oh, that person is working for the church. They may have some pity and all that. And they give money, you know, and they borrow money. Uh, but then that if they don't return that money, it puts the whole, us, the church, as staff in a very bad light. You know, so we had to say, you know, we have to put some things here in, 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 in how people interact uh, with church members and uh, you know, and I used to receive complaints. So, so and so is a staff, and they're behaving like this, and so and so is a, you know, I see them up on the stage, and they're behaving like this, and so you know, it all you should come back. Uh, the congregation is, you know, pointing it back on me. So then I had to say, okay, okay, you know, we need to have something here uh, to guide the interaction of staff with church members and so on. Um, you know, and then we, you know, counseling. We can make. We, since we have a counseling department, we make that available for our staff. Uh, how do we do performance reviews? You know, how do we evaluate? Now, this is a challenging area because it's not like a professional organization where you know you can say, well, you have to bring in sales of so many, uh, so, so many such amount, or you have to do you know whatever. The metrics are very different here, so it's it's an area we're still learning. We we don't find too much out there, but we're still learning here. Performance, how do you do bonus calculation? So that's documented. Uh, so then, you know, in the past, we've had people wanting to take loans from the church. And they say, you know, I'm facing a financial need. Can the church give me a loan? In the early days, we used to, you know, people want to buy a bike and we used to give them a loan to buy a bike. And then after some time, it became a little too much because we had more staff and the next thing to think about is what if 10 staff want to take loans from the church? Uh, uh, you know, that becomes a problem because, you know, it, it affects our finances. And so then we had to make a decision. Okay, we'll give, we won't give loans. Uh, we will only give, you know, so much salary advance one or two months. I don't know what it is, but, you know, that's what we will do. And so we had to standardize everything to be fair with all our staff using uh, office resources, then taking care of the spiritual work-related we have certain standards for communications. I'll, I'll get to that, right? Uh, so another area that we had to come up with the policy was, well, I'm part of APC, I'm serving here, but, uh, you know, uh, maybe some were also involved with another ministry, you know, or maybe they were involved with another ministry before they even came to APC. How do we manage that, you know, because, that person is a staff, is working here at APC, but they may be also working for some other Christian ministry, either as a volunteer or doing something to help them. Uh, so, you know, we needed some clarity on that. So again, these are, you know, scenarios we went through and therefore we came up with certain policies to manage those kinds of uh, situations, right? So, and, and I'm not gonna read the document, I'm just giving this as an example 
to show that uh, all of this has been documented and it's given to you know somebody who comes to join the church or uh, the organization it's a staff and consultant guideline so we put it down so that they are very clear uh, that uh, you know when you come to work here uh, this is how we all work together these are our policies these are our how we uh, you know these are some some of the things that guide us when we make decisions so very quickly let me just touch on a few other things and then um, i will um, keep some time for questions so then there are operational guidelines that means like you know we said in, in a christian organization you may have volunteer teams uh, you may have different kinds of teams doing different things and then you may have interaction between among teams or between teams right so how do these people work together again uh, this all evolved over time uh, and so you know what tasks need to be done how should they be done and so on and similarly this goes down the practice standards means go, it goes into a little bit more detail like you know uh, 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 graphic design what should go into graphic design and uh, in our videos and our books and so on so these things have evolved over time and uh, let me just um, sorry uh, let me just uh, go to a web page apcw.org slash guidelines i'll just share that with you in a minute okay let me share this. So, Kiran is getting tired. <laughs> All right, so you can see this. So in our website, apcw.org slash guidelines. So, you know, over time we wrote, you know, we wrote guidelines for various things like book table, you know, okay, how do you arrange books on the book table? You know, the unit, they need to come a little early, they need to set it up, they need to keep books there. What if you go run down, you know, stock on the books? So we had to put that in place. Now these, these things didn't happen on day one, you know, these, all of these things, um, uh, you know, evolved over time. So we had to write all these things down. We had child protection policy in the, you know, remember there was a time some years ago, in Bangalore, um, uh, children were at risk even in schools. So that became a, you know, a very serious problem in the, we see in the newspapers. And so we had to write this down uh, how, and we had to, you know, we right now every, uh, we, we, we share this with all our children's church teachers who come to teach, you know. So like this, uh, there are different guidelines that guide different teams that are serving in the church. And you see, you, you know, various things. So there's our promotion policy. I, uh, I had talked about it before uh, and so on, right? Uh, so all of these things are related. Now you, you're welcome to take it and use it, modify it and use it for your ministry. But, you know, a lot of work has gone into establishing or writing these up. Then we also had to put down, you know, certain guidelines for uh, areas of work like, you know, design guidelines or uh, uh, for search engine optimization. These are work specific, these are standards. Um, and then these are of course role descriptions, you know, what do these people do in the organization, right? So all of this has been documented and it's made available to people, primarily our staff and volunteers for them to go and access at any time uh, if they have any questions. And we use it as part of our training. Now, all of this has been on hold for the last, uh, you know, since the lockdown, we've not been using it. But, you know, once things go back to normal, we will go and, you know, begin to use these documents. Uh, let me just talk a little bit about practice standards. Um, so we, we talked about three areas. One is uh, administrative policies, second is operational guidelines, and third is practice standards. Uh, what do we mean by that? You know, uh, it means that in, in every area of work, we have to follow certain standards, you know, especially in things that go public. 
So one big area for us was uh, gra graphics design. You know, uh, because the person is creating graphics, of course we want it to be, you know, very good. We want it to be contemporary, but we also need to standardize certain things you know, uh, right from the kinds of images we use. We can't use any kind of image. You know, the images have to be aligned to what is biblical, what is uh, represent, what is, you know, what is accurately representing us as Christians. So we can't just randomly use any images in our graphics. And I remember, you know, in the, there used to be a time that I used to get a lot of feedback, you know, one simple thing, you know, uh, this must have happened some, you know, at least two, three years ago. Uh, in one of the graphic images, and for what, I don't know, the promotion, there was an image of a person. Uh, it it showed, showed his uh, hand, but he had a tattoo on his hand. And it was a cross, tattoo of a cross. So immediately somebody who saw it, whether on Facebook or Instagram, took a photo, sent it straight to me and saying, so is APC promoting tattoos? I, oh, no, it's like, that's not the message we want to give. But that's the question that is coming back from, you know, somebody who saw it. So immediately I had to contact, you know, a graphics person and say, hey, you know, please yeah, Photoshop the tattoos, take it off, uh, resubmit the image, put it out there. Uh, you know, this is the because this is the impression somebody outside is getting when they see the graphic that's been done. You know, it's a very small thing, a minor thing, but it is sending a wrong message, a message that we as a church don't want to send. You know, and so I had to tell them, you know, so please be careful, be very careful in the graphics you're using, all these things. So, like this, we keep learning. Uh, you know, and so we have to have standards, you know, the graphics we use, the font we use, um, what images we use, you know, it has to communicate a certain message to the people and we have to be very careful because um, people could, uh, you know, come back. Sometimes it's a very, very sincere mistake. I remember one book cover, one of our persons had done, this was some years ago, uh, 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 for a foundation's book, I said, you know, just take a picture that shows something being built up. So what he took, he did took a picture which had pebbles. So there's a big pebble, there's a smaller pebble, there's another smaller pebble, and there's another smaller pebble. So in his mind, that picture was representing something that was being built up. So he designed the book cover, we even printed the book. Uh, and then after that, somebody gave feedback, hey, this, this image is the image of some Eastern, the practice that represents some sort of an Eastern, uh, you know, uh, religion or mysticism or form of worship. And I didn't even know what it was. You know, I, I didn't even think like that. It's a, car, it's a book cover. Then we had to say, oh no, we already printed so many books, it has this cover and we're sending a wrong message because the it's just it's just stones on top of each. Then I said, no, 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 let's get a picture. What I meant was somebody laying a foundation. So it has to be bricks, it has to be cement. So we had to change the book cover, you know. But uh, I'm just giving a simple example where, uh, uh, you know, we have to, we have to have standards of practices that say like, you know, you need to be careful. So today, you know, uh, so we have a QA process uh, where we have to check our videos, check, um, check what, you know, uh, the graphics before they go out. And uh, one of the things we have to check is uh, make sure that, uh, you know, all these things are, so some of the images I myself, you know, if it's a book cover, I check it myself. And these are some of the questions I will ask, you know, is this image okay? And, uh, is this image communicating something? In fact, just maybe a month or two ago, we, I was reviewing videos that were being done for our e-learning portal. And I had to correct certain things. I just say, hey, don't use this image because it's sending this kind of a message. Or, uh, you know, there was a simple book, you know, used in one of the short videos of, in the e-learning portal. Uh, and I said, I, what kind of a book is it? You know, look closely. Because you never know, somebody will look into the image and if there's something written there, you know, he, the person doing the video thinks it's a Bible, but if they don't look at it, 
and I say, if you're not sure it's a Bible, then don't use that image because you know there's something written there, maybe in Latin, and it might mean something else, and we'll get into trouble later. So change that. You know, uh, these are you know, but these are you know, so we have to have standards in everything: graphics, videos, um, everything that's being done. So what we have established um, over time, and this hasn't happened overnight, but over time, in every area. There are standards. There's a certain way in which a work product is done. Uh, the team members hold each other to that standard. And if it's not adhering to that standard, then it is discarded. You know, basically right now everybody does according to the standard. Okay. So our time is up. We will continue this uh, on on Friday uh, as we talk. Uh, you know about policies, guidelines, and standards that have to be established inside the organization so that things function well. Okay. Uh, sorry, I didn't keep any time for questions. I um, I spoke the whole time. Um, yeah. All right. So we'll pause here, but, you know, we will have time for questions next uh, class. Okay. Okay. Can we... Close in prayer, please. I'm sorry I spoke the whole time. I didn't give any uh, time for questions. Time is up. But anyway, uh, let's pray and dismiss, and we will take questions uh, next class. Okay. Could somebody pray and dismiss us, please? Anyone can pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we come into your presence. So, Father God, thank you for this wonderful day, a Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for helping us to attend today's class of Father God Jesus and uh, help us to align with the Word of God and help us to align with the policies that we have in the organization of Father God Jesus. Um, help us to uh, walk in uh, truth and integrity of Father God Jesus and keep us away from all the distraction of Father God Jesus. Thank you for everything. We take complete control of the state of Father God. In Jesus' name we pray this prayer of Father God. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being part of the class. And uh, see you again. So God bless. Bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you everyone. Thank you. Thank you.